Good morning students. Welcome to your computer class. Well, today in this class, we will start from the last topic that we have left in our previous class and that was the functional components of a computer system. Well, in this we have to discuss about these functional components, their working and some other related information about these components. So now let's begin. When as we have discussed earlier, mainly we have four functional components in our computer system. These components are input devices, processing unit, output devices and storage. Fine. As I have told you earlier, these input devices are the devices through which we can input the data. Fine. And this processing device is our CPU. And I have told you earlier that this output device or these output devices are the devices through which we can get the output or through which we can see the final result fine and then at last we have this storage this storage is responsible for storing all the data fine that data can be your temporary data it can be your permanent data it can be your results or sometimes it can be your program files fine now let's begin well here we have this simple flow here in this diagram we can see that we have these input devices over here then the center part is termed as our cpu and then over here we have this uh, output devices fine now in general as i have told you earlier that our computer works on this ipo cycle fine in the ipo cycle first we have to give some inputs then the cpu can, uh, will process the inputs and then it will generate the output and that output will be given to the output devices fine now inside this cpu we have two units two functional units and these two functional units are termed as cu and alu fine in this video we have to discuss about the cu and alu in detail fine and then when the cu and alu works on the data after calculating the result that result is sometimes stored in our computer's storage so for that this storage unit or this memory unit is generally used fine now let's see input devices it is responsible for providing information in the computer and is performed by input unit fine as i have told you just now that input devices are basically used for getting the input or for taking the inputs from the user fine now some most commonly used input devices are keyboard mouse camera and scanner fine so these are some of the most commonly used input devices we can also include the audio recording softwares as our input device fine so like we have microphones these microphones are also the examples of input devices fine now next we have output devices output devices are responsible for displaying the data fine these are basically responsible for displaying the data input to computer or processed data in human readable form fine now generally whenever we type anything in the computer we are able to see that input in our computer's display fine or when we process something or when our computer generates any result that result is also available to us by using these output devices fine so it means that these output devices will show you all kind of output fine some most commonly used output devices are monitor printer plotter and speaker fine we have so many other output devices also but these are some of the most commonly used output devices fine now there is a homework for you all you have to write at least four four input and output devices in your notebook other than these fine then next we have storage well storage is one of the most important unit of our computer system fine now when we generate any kind of result or whenever we take any kind of input that input or that result has to be stored in our computer so that we can use it in future fine now this is responsible for storing any kind of information permanently fine this storage device is responsible for storing our information permanently and it is performed by the storage unit fine this task of storing the files or storing the data is performed by the storage unit fine some most commonly used storage devices are hard disk cd dvd and usb drive fine we have some other like we have memory cards fine we have ssd drives so all of these are the examples of storage then next we have the most important and the main unit of our cpu that is termed as our processing unit fine this processing unit is generally responsible for all the operations that we do fine all the outputs that we get and everything that we are doing with our computer fine it means it is responsible for everything that you are doing with your computer or that your computer is showing to you fine now 
it is responsible for carrying out the given instructions on the given data fine in easy words we can say that whenever we input something this processing unit works on that input and then it returns the output to the user fine so it means it will simply carry out the given instructions on the data that you will input fine now this processing part is done by the cpu okay the cpu stands for central processing unit fine now in the cpu we have three components as we have discussed earlier fine these three components are alu cu and then we have this primary memory this primary memory is available in the computer's motherboard whereas the storage that we have discussed earlier that storage is a secondary memory fine so now this alu stands for arithmetic and logical unit or arithmetic and logic unit fine this alu is responsible for carrying out all the types of arithmetical or logical operations fine then next we have cu that is control unit this control unit is responsible for controlling the execution of instructions fine and it only executes one instruction at a time hence it supervises and controls the required components to carry out the instructions fine now every component of our computer system every data item every processing everything will be controlled by this control unit fine then next we have this primary memory fine this primary primary memory this primary memory is made available to the cpu so that it can store the data and instructions which are being processed fine this primary memory is generally temporary in nature so it means it is not permanent there is a part of this time primary memory which is temporary in nature and that is not permanent okay now next we have to discuss about the most important functional component of the computer system that is termed as our cpu fine this cpu is often termed as the brain of computer fine it is also termed as the computer's brain cpu stands for central processing unit and it is the brain of our computer system brain means it will perform all the operations of our computer it will take all the decisions it will manage all the processes fine so everything that we are doing in a computer it is controlled and managed by the cpu of the computer system fine it should be it fine it controls and directs the internal activities and actions of a computer fine cpu can control and direct the internal activities and actions of a computer system it means it will simply control and manage everything that is being done inside our computer's uh, cpu fine a cpu does the entire thinking and controlling in a processing action fine it will perform all the types of decisions take all the decisions and it will control everything when it is processing a task fine now all the components of computers are controlled by the cpu it means everything in our computer is controlled and managed by the cpu only fine this cpu is often called as microprocessor fine so now the processor chip that we have in our computer system this chip is termed as the cpu fine that circuit board is not the cpu that circuit board is the motherboard but that chip that we have in that circuit board of our computer system that is termed as our processor or that cpu fine or it is also termed as the microprocessor fine now the cpu has three basic sections these three basic sections are alu cu and registers fine just now we have discussed about this alu and cu but the only thing that we haven't discussed yet is the register fine now all the components of cpu work together and also direct and control all the input output operations fine it simply means that our cpu manages and controls everything and also manages the input output operations fine now all these input devices output devices and secondary memory that is our permanent memory is connected to the computer's motherboard fine and these are connected via some cables and these cables are termed as the system buses it's a very important term system buses are the wires or cables available inside the cpu cabinet fine तो जो सी के बॉक्स में जितनी भी केबल्स होती हैं ऑल दीज केबल्स आर टर्म्ड एज द सिस्टम बसेस फाइन नाउ दिस अ होमवर्क टर्म फॉर यू ऑल यू हैव टू लर्न और रीड अबाउट दिस मदरबोर्ड बाय योर ओन एंड वी विल डिस्कस दिस टर्म इन आर नेक्स्ट टर्न नाउ फाइन नाउ नेक्स्ट वी हैव एल यू एल यू स्टैंड फॉर अर्थमेटिकल एंड लॉजिकल यूनिट और अर्थमेटिक लॉजिक 
unit okay now this unit performs the computing functions and these functions are given below first of all it can perform all the arithmetical operations in which we can include the functions like addition subtraction multiplication and division the next we have it can perform all the logical operations which involves comparisons such as less than greater than or equal to operations fine so it means all the logical and arithmetical operations where our computer has to take any kind of decision or where it has to calculate some result all these operations are managed and controlled by the alu fine and when it generates some results these results are stored in the computer's register fine this register is a piece of memory now we have to discuss about the register well all the temporary data in our computer is stored inside a memory fine that piece of memory is termed as register and this register is already avail available to our computer's motherboard fine well because it is inside the computer's motherboard that's why it has a very small size it is very uh, it has a very limited size but it's a very fast memory which is available to our computer's motherboard fine so it means every piece of operation that your computer will process that process will use the register for the intermediary results fine then next we have control unit this control unit directs the entire computer system to carry out or to execute stored program instructions fine it means it will simply manage everything in your computer it directs the data flow between computer computer processor memory and input output devices fine so in easy words we can say that it generally manages everything it will manage the flow of data in our computer's processor memory and input output devices now next we have to discuss about the term which is machine cycle well generally our computer performs everything in four steps these four steps are given below we have to discuss these four steps and then we have to discuss about this term machine cycle the first step is that the control unit gets the instructions from the memory it means whenever you do something some instructions will be given to your control unit by the computer's memory fine then after getting these instructions your control unit decides that what is to be done with that particular instruction or that data fine it will check that input or that instruction and then it will decide that whether it has to be given to the alu or whether it has to directly push that data to the output devices fine now when this alu gets the data it performs the operations like addition subtraction or other logical operations and after that the results are obtained and for taking these results again the cu take the results and give it to the memory or storage fine so now here we have total four steps this first and second and then this third and fourth fine this first and second step is termed as our instruction cycle or instruction time and this third and fourth step is termed as our execution cycle or execution uh, time fine and both of these cycles or times are combined termed as our machine cycle fine now the first two steps in the given above make it the instruction time whereas the last two are termed as the execution time and combinedly these two times are termed as the machine cycle fine now let's see once again we have to discuss this diagram fine now let's see once again what happens generally so now whenever you will give some input to your computer that input or that data will first be given to the computer's memory fine then after the computer memory that instruction is given to the cu fine then here the cu will determine whether it is a operational task or it is just a simple output operation fine if in case in that task you have to perform any kind of calculation or you want to perform any kind of calculation in that case that task will be given to the alu fine then alu will perform the given operations and after calculating the result again this data is given to the cu fine when this cu will get the result it will send that result to the output devices as well as to the computer's memory fine so it is our complete ipo cycle with the machine cycle so now this is all for today so today we have discussed about the cpu the machine cycle and then the ipo cycle in detail fine in our next turn we have to discuss about the types of computer there are some notes important notes for you all fine the first point is that beta the notes that you are getting you have to write all these notes in your register if you have one new register you can do in that but if you don't have a new register in that case you can write these notes in register pages 
fine or you can do this work in your old computer notebook fine but yaad rakhna beta you have to stick these pages back to your new notebook when you will get it okay now the next point you have to read the notes at least twice or thrice fine or you can revise this video also multiple times as per your wish fine because it will help you to improve your concepts fine build your concepts very properly and if in case you have any doubt you can comment down your all the queries and all the doubts in the comment section of this video only fine there is no need to ask your queries in the whatsapp group if in case you have any computer doubt you can ask me in the comment sections only and you will get the replies over there fine now in our next class we have to start a new topic of this chapter that is types of computer fine so the pdf you have already got fine in that pdf this chapter is already there so you have to read it once very carefully and then notes are already uploaded so you have to write these notes and kindly complete your work on time okay so thanks for watching stay healthy and stay safe